Hello everyone, here's Sheila again doing another one of her re-recordings from the original tape cassettes that I did while staying in Suffolk and Cambridgeshire. On this one it's 2006 and I'll be off to Wiccan, not far from Soham. Then I end up in um, Ely, which is um, where there's a very large cathedral of which I get on the roof. And I also visit one of the homes of Oliver Cromwell. So here we go, back in time from 2010 to 2006. 29th of August 2006. And I'm going out on one of my field trips. I'm actually going to go to Burwell first because they've got a museum there. So I thought I'd have a look around that and then I'm going to pot around um, a couple of villages. Um, to do some um, grave hunting. Right, well, I got to Burwell, where you can park to go to the museum, and it's only open on Thursdays, Sundays, and bank holidays. So I couldn't go, I couldn't do that. But so I've come to Wiccan, which is on the outskirts of Soham. While I was parked at the museum, I spoke to Georgia, who gave me some sad news of the death of um, Marjorie Bragg from Barrow, who apparently died on over the bank holiday on Sunday in the, in the late afternoon, following, um, she'd been preparing, she'd been at the club, Barrow social club and she came back and started preparing the dinner because she has all her kids around quite often for Sunday lunch and um, she sat, apparently she sat down in the chair or must have sat down in the chair and um, she never woke up um, so that's quite a sad event because I've known Marge for nearly uh, 19 or 20 years she's in her early 60s and she worked in the social club behind the bar. Um, she did smoke and like the odd drink as well. But she was quite, you know, it's a bit of a shock. Because um, I know her children, Pete Bragg, Johnny Bragg, and um, one of the other Braggs um, who uh, who's friends with the kids. Robert Bragg, yeah, that's right. And so it was a, it's a bit of a shock, really. Um, from that point of view. So, you never know when it's going to happen, do you? Anyway, I'm at Wiccan. And I'm going to do um, a grave search. <laughs> the tape might sound funny in a minute, because I'm going over to the other speed. Hey, Dad, I'm going to speed, mate. Once I get out of the van, I've backed up near the church. There's a in memory of Benjamin Arbor, A-R-B-E-R, who died January the 8th, 1870, age 60. Also Elizabeth, his wife, who died June the 6th, 1846, age 34. Also Elizabeth, their daughter, who died February the 7th, 1860, age 21. We need to do our usual clockwise tour. There's a couple of grace props against the roadside wall. I'll just see if I can read anything. <laughs> anyway, starting here, I don't know the name of the church yet. Somebody Lister. Could be Roger. Or Robert. No, Robert Lister. Died in February 1873, aged Eighty-seven years. Stone. RL eighteen seventy-eight. Behind him, you've got. Oh, here it rests. Charles William F F R A F R A. Looks like N O R E N, whatever that says. 
died in 1880, born 1707. No, that can't be right, 1797. Behind him, he's got a grave off in memory of... God, these... Um, can't read it. Looks like old English. Whenever they died, whoever it was, died in 1836. Begins with M, M A, looks like an R. Don't know. Stick to the church a minute. Oh, hold on, I'll just do these first and get in a bit of a position. Got Alice, beloved wife of somebody. to read again. Something man or ham. Elias Fuller, who died in 1876, age 65, and Robert Fuller, who died in 1879. Stone. Then there's um, a little chain fencing area of um, crematorium. Stones. You've got Brenda Collin, Kathleen Jackson, Joseph Jackson, Frank Coulston, Nightingale, Wilfred, George Harding, VG and BM Bailey, Cyril and Mary Bullman, Flo Mesa, Phyllis, Peggy, Maud, Crick, Victor Charles, Williams, Rosemary Ada Rust, born 1905. Died 2003. Ada Doris Lee, 1905 to 1997. Ina Ruth Ickeringill, 1907 to 1988. David Ickeringill. He died in 1997. Doris Mary Webb. William Barnes. Peter Rumblow. 1936-2003. That's a little um, clam stones. And lying against the wall are uh, Hannah Polting Poltington. It's an old one. Tibbets, is it? A Tibbet. A John Bullman. That's 18 something. I think that might be her daughter or something. That was his wife, actually, who died then. The wife of James. Her name was Elizabeth. And then you've got Robert Palmby, her brother, who died September the 14th, 18. Age 29. Probably for a wedding reception at some point. I think you can also see Eli Cathedral. It's a huge big structure, a tower. Could be Eli. Then we've got Luke. Oh my god, what name is that? Staples. When the sun came on it, then I could see it. Luke Staples. He died February 1886, age 69, and if he died 1868, age 63. In my way backwards and forth, there's a lot of bare ground where stones obviously were once. You've got, um, they're not always easy to read these. Maria Harvey, who died in 18... 51, age 81, and Susan, his wife, who died 18, looks like 30, age 74, or it could be 1850. Then we've got John Williamson and Elizabeth Flack, who died April the 28th, 1855, age 20, quiz and forwards. Dixon, James. No. Could be, oh, I 
forget what it is. It ends T A R F though. Bring it to the church as we go round. So John Harry. Somebody Rowell. Rowell. R O W E. Do what the hell? Mule. 
and Sarah Susan, daughter of John and Elizabeth Slack, who died the 10th of June, 1840. Slack, who died in 18, which says, um, with an L.A. is of 1798. Sorry, wife of John Cropley. I think it's going to pour with rain any second. There's even gravestones inside the, um, marquee they got up. Right, there's big clouds come in. We've got William Spland, who died March the 29th, 1853, aged 58. Thy will be done. Also, Mary, his wife, who died May the 29th, 1879, aged 76. In remembrance of Steedman William, the beloved son of William and Mary Spland, who died October the 22nd, 1847, aged 20. We've got a huge big stone with with urns on it. Um, William Aspand, who died October 1846, aged 93. And Martha, beloved wife of William Aspland, who died 1837 in her 67th year. In on a minute, under big tree. James Dennis, who departed this life 16th of March, 1855, aged 72. Isaac Aspland, who died March the 30th, 1875, aged 75. There's a lot of them here. Lots of footstones all broken up at the back here. Um, lots of big slabs of a monument maybe once. Another Isaac Aspland, who died in 1813, age 39. Okay, the wife of Isaac. Then you've got somebody else who's Barry's wife, who died 1852. I can actually inside the marquee, there's a couple of graves as well. The marquee up, it looks like. Look at some shop. the other side of the road, so I should go in there in a sec. It's at the front of the church. Read out the name of the church as well, that would be handy. Robert, son of Thomas and Liza Fuller, died aged 17 in 1833 when he died in 1812. There's a Martin. I knew that it was like a little tiny, um, entrance porch thing and something 56 also Eliza their daughter Mary Tibbet who died in 1830 at age 71 just met a chap taking the marquee down he actually holds the records but didn't seem bothered to show me them Got Thomas Sutton, who died in 1857, age 71, and Martha, his wife, who died in 1850. So that's the main grave burial records for some reason. He might be a warden. And... So that's the stone of, a, of um, an arbor. A memory of... Philip. Apologies for this tape recording, it's really bad. It's either the tape recorder or the tape did get quite damp at one point because I'd been out in the rain a lot. I, I blame some of that on this, um, on the rain, I think. Arbor, A R B E R. I'm now just going to nip across the road down this, there won't be great details unless I come across a family name. Fully placed, locked up, no dogs allowed, the seating area with watering cans by this little building. Frances Edie, who died in 1904 to 74, 27, she died in July, he died in September, and Emily Edie, E-A-D-Y, who died in 1933 to 77. <coughs> These are some of the older large ones. Uh, Bunny, somebody. 
of Robert Mortlock, Trees, died in 1898, age of 43. Robert and Isaac Aspland, born September the 2nd, 1832. Beloved wife of Charles Cockrell, who died in 1896, age 72. Knowles, niece Sutton, born September 1828, passed away 1908. And Samuel Sutton, died in 18... Or could be born in 
Every now and again, it sounds like I'm doing another tape. So I keep butting in with bits and pieces. It's very strange. I might have to try this out on the other tape recorder later. I do at some point go back to that Wiccan. It might be on another tape, but it was very poor. That was very poor, but I'm going to try that one out on a different tape recorder. But I'm carrying on for now, because I think I go into Eile. I don't know how you pronounce it. If it's Eile. It could be Eile, not Eli. Oh, I don't know. Wiccan Church was called the Church of St. Lawrence. I'm on my way to Eli Cathedral, I think. And this is a village called Stratham. It's like hurricane winds and dodgy weather. It seems to be quite common in the last week or so. I had a bloody girl. And, um, I presume this church I can see. 
Hammering time. I have no idea how big this place is, but it's got a park and ride facility. Park for Eli, the start attractions follow. We're entering. I don't know if it's a city, it could be a city, I suppose, but it'll be able to park easier. I'm just going to hang on here for a minute. It's free parking. I think I'll have a wee. I'm going to pull my curtains. Once again, handy to have one on board. Toilet facilities. I forgot. It's free parking. I'm moving to Boat Eli now. I found Oliver Cromwell first. During this part of the tape recording, I am going around inside Oliver Cromwell's house. Um, so you won't always hear me talking a great deal, but sometimes you'll hear some background music or even a tape recording that's being played telling you about his life and things like that. Now this particular house is also visited by people trying to get in contact with various spirits and ghosts. It's well known to be haunted. And at one point I do enter the chamber of Oliver Cromwell's bedroom where he was supposed to have passed away and they've got an actual model of him in the bed and I took a photograph of that anyway back to the tape recording I hope it doesn't play up too much That noise, that clicking noise, is the, an old clock.
funny that the night Oliver Cromwell died, the tower, a part of the tower or spire of um, St Mary's D Dulham, collapsed and crashed to the floor. There was a terrible storm. That spire, which normally fitted on top of um, St Mary's, was never rebuilt.